little bit of a bed there. Snap that off, bring this back so it's about halfway. Then when you get your post, this is again it's a tempo product, you can use a number of different products. Um, you can use um, calf tail. Yeah, you can use calf tail, it's a good one. Uh, you can use horse hair, you can use um, the, uh, this, there's an oldest one that I use, which is basically um, like an indicator floss. And uh, this one's a really good one because this, this really stays straight. So you only need to chop a piece off. You need to think about descent, depending on the size of the hook, the bigger the hook, the more floss. Uh, this one will probably take a little bit of it out because you'll do it wise your post, ends up a bit too thick. Um, and the, the simplest way of doing it is to pop that right around there. Get it looking nice and tidy. Give it a bit of a twist and bang it straight on with a bit of whipping. This is a parachute Evans by Tony Jakes. <laughs> now, so, whoops, said Oxford is not using me right. Um, oh, you're unfamiliar. Un un very unfamiliar with the, uh, with the kit here. But um, that's, a, that's in about the right place now. Needs to sit back just a little bit better. Then what we're going to do is we're going to form a post, and the way you form a post is to steadily wrap it round and round and round. Just keep going nice and steady. And you're going to build it up for probably about two millimeters of thread, as you can see. And you're coming slowly up the post now to form. The actual post with the thread. So you need a decent post on there. That's got about two millimeters there now. Now oh, the other thing I should mention is this thread's nice and thin. So the smaller the hook you need to use thinner threads. The um, so a six threads too heavy. You need to get down to 14 if you can get it or 20. Uh, just make sure it's well tied in so it doesn't go around on the hook. Could be a bit of super glue on it or something? Normally I put a bit of um, here, oh, yeah. right now. Just, just this is fine. Yeah. This stuff's good. Just a tiny little bit of this to hold everything in place and stop it moving around on the hook. Mm -hmm. The other thing to do next. A lot of people will start looking at putting the body together. You actually get your heckle in place now. Early days, and you just got to work around the heckle once it's in. So I'm going to pick. Talk about heckles. Lakeland is probably the best heckles you can get. If you're going to buy heckles, really fine ones like this, yeah. you need to buy premium grade heckles. Don't buy bronze or silver grade. Get the spend the extra money. It might cost you about seventy bucks, but if you get a cape. Uh, you get a lot of flies out of one, don't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And th this, this is a good one, but these are quite short. The ones I've got about this long. And uh, these, these are really nice, these ones. So these are very good. And you'll get a couple of flies out of one of these. Uh, so you just got to find a one that's about the right. And what you're looking for is a fibre that's the same depth as the gape in the hook. So I'm going to pick one out of there. I'll get one a little bit longer. Time. I'm not too thin. Take your time and select, select one that's going to look good on the fly. That one's probably going to do it if they use about halfway down. So the way I do it is a strip. I'm not, I'm not going to use all this fluffy stuff on the end. It's just going to make, I'm going to take it where it's going to get that length of fibre there and I'll strip this away. People know how to check with the game. You know, just yeah. just just bend your fly like that and check it against. Check the length like that. So I'm it's I'm gonna way. get myself a nice um, little tail on there. So you, you've got a little point on the end. And you've got a little more hackle around it. So it's looking like that now. And what we're going to do is, as we tie this, we want the fibres to sit down. We don't want them sticking up, so you've got to get it with the concave the right way around. So the concave is actually facing towards the back of the fly. And to do that, see what I can do. 
not familiar with this vice. Um, get that round there. See if we can. Yeah, that's about right. So you've tied it onto the post, yep. not onto the shank. Goes onto the post. Yep. A couple of times, so it's going to sit. I want it to go and actually catch in at the top of that post that I've tied. So it's coursing at about the right spot now. So, as you can see, where it's tied in now, it's at the top of the post. And the fibres, when they bend it down, they're pointing up. <laughs> so I'm going to try and turn it around a bit so that when you bend it down, the fibres are pointing down. And then tying the tail around the shank of the hook. If that tail's long enough, you can normally catch it in along the shank of the hook. Oh, I see. That makes sure that it doesn't right, come right. off then. Yes, yes. No, so you don't have to do that. So it won't slide in. Yeah, yeah. Then you can lay, lay a base layer down like this, down to the tail. You're then going to look for a similar fiber at the end, which is longer. And we're going to find one that's long enough to form a tail. So you get a bunch of fibers off. One of the longer. Like these ones are longer. Pull them off, bend them over, and that's basically the tail right there. It's about swaying. Yeah. No, it doesn't need to be a very big tail at all. Now, you're going to tie them in what you call pinch and turns. A pinch and turn means that you're going to bring the thread down until it's just past the barb on the hook before the hook starts turning around. You're going to hold that in there. You're going to pinch the thread in your fingers like this and you're going to pull it down across that little bit of hackle there and then you're going to do it again. You're going to pinch, you're going to put it over and you're going to pull it down. Have you got it? Like that. So you've got to um, try and get it to sit up. A few wires in, and then come back again to the end and go underneath so you get the tail sitting up. So you get a nice high sitting tail, you can do it a couple of times if you need to, then come around. The next thing I'm going to do is to tie, get rid of a bit of those fibers, we don't want them sticking through later on. Normally keep a bag here and chuck all the rubbish in as you go. Good idea. Yeah? Easy, eh? And then I use, um, you can use a lot of different types of dubbing. But we all, we all use this stuff. And we're normally cutting the hairs off to tie onto grubs and different types of hair and copper and everything else. But the underfair in this is absolutely perfect. You probably don't need much more than that. I chop it up a little bit so you don't have enough fibers too long. Mix it up my fingers. And a little bit of spit. And you want a tiny, tiny little bit of it. Even that's probably too much. What's on the hook there is probably just about enough. What's on the thread. And you're going to make a dub and roll, a very, very fine dub and roll. And you take your time when you're doing this dub and roll because once it goes on, it's fine, it, it will do the job. So you might as well spend a few minutes getting the dub and roll right and getting it nice and thin. So you can bring it out, put more and more, and just bring those fibres down. It doesn't look like there's much on there, and that's the trick. You don't need much at all. Sometimes the more you play with it, the worse it gets. But after a while... <laughs> you had it pretty good there for a while. Yeah, <laughs> and then they knocked a piece off it. I've always amazed old Davey McFarland. He's able to spin it and then he slides it up. Yeah, it slides it up. Up, up underneath yeah. the hook. And what they'll usually do is they'll, they'll get it on like that. And then they'll dub it so that it's caught in the most there. But that's not too bad now, actually. 
And what I'm going to try and do is put, put it on the body so that it forms a cigar shape. It's going to be thinner at the back and thicker at the front. And you've got to watch here that you don't hit, hit the barb and then snap your... Um, so that's going on quite nicely, actually. I like to keep them fairly thin. So if you think it needs building up, just keep putting more on. Then you're going to come round the body, and then you're going to come round the front, and we're going to come back again, like that. Now, I'm trying to think where I normally leave my thread, because I'm just going to have on these for a while. I normally leave my thread there, so that when I put the hackle on, I can tie the hackle in. So I can get this hackle sitting in the right place now. Just spin it around like this. Make sure all your threads are neat and tidy on you. After all that knocking everything about, we don't want to get this this, this nylon fibre all over the place. Get that tidy again. And we're going to go around about six times. Two. And you're progressively going down the post. Down the post. Four. Five. And you can use your hackle pliers at this stage. I think I'm going to get away with it. Six. And then get your thread and weave it through the fibres. Don't just turn around. Get it weaving through like that. <laughs> Otherwise, you push them, they all end up pulling down underneath the fly. So that's pretty much got it there. And as you see, that hackle's in place. And you can pull the fibres back so that they're right clear of the eye and he can get a little bit of a head <laughs> over the eye and then if I can use some more quick finish yet, I'm going to be using oh. four. Yeah. I've used it with this model before. So, how do you do these yeah. ones? Something like that? Yeah, yeah that's it. Yeah. Yeah. And you whack the finish on. There you go. I can get a shot of all of that. Get a shot of that fella there. And you put your scissors like this. You don't cut it. You push it, otherwise you cut all the other fibres off. That gets rid of that fella there. And then what I normally do is push it down with fingernails so that it flattens everything out a bit. So a little bit of get on um, fine needle, a little bit of that, and dob it just in there so, so the fibres don't ride off again. And then the last job is to cut the post and get the post where you want it to be. I'll get rid of a few of these little bits of nylon first, which will make it a bit of tidy. And the way I do it is I pull it back, so I've got the length of the hook there, pull it forward, pull it tight and give it a flick. And there's your fly there. Wow. Nice job, sir. Wow. Some, sometimes that can get a little bit long, and when you cast it, you can start parachute. So sometimes you might want to keep it a little bit shorter. But as you're practicing with it, you'll see the fly casting better. Two short casts, you see how the fly lands. But that should land perfectly on the water. The last thing you really need is a tiny little bit of. Um, bit of uh, what is it? Nail polish, isn't it? Yeah. Just, just there to stop your thread coming undone. And that there's a parachute out. And, uh, and that's a big one. Yeah. Well done, Tony. Well done. Mine don't look anything like that. You got, <laughs> you got that, Pete? You'll be able to tie that in a couple of weeks. You make them even smaller. Yeah. It's a lot easier with that.